Your activity video for today is going to be the Chinese New Year. Hi and welcome, I'm Helen Hughes from Mini Water Adventurers and I am your go-to person for swimming lesson ideas. So I've got some really great activities for you um, for Chinese New Year and this year 2024 is the year of the dragon. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to go through some different ideas that I have come up with for this theme. Using my handy um, swimmers, swimming teachers planner notebook and in here every week or every time that I do a new themed activity uh, for the lessons that I'll be doing, I make sure I write it down in here so that when I come back to it next year, I know exactly what I have done. So this year is, like I said, the dragon. So um, I actually do have a theme of um, a a sort of a life story uh, where I do different um, children's books that are that you can actually adapt to the pool and do loads of different cool activities when you are reading a book as well. So uh, that is a whole another video that I'll probably do at a later point, but I have done that and it's called Zog. So you could potentially do this theme for a couple of weeks to celebrate the Chinese New Year um, and you can incorporate Zog because uh, the, the beautiful book, one of my son's favourites, is the dragon. So I've used these little dragons here that are from Baker Ross and they are part of Do Your Own kits. They come with foam, which is fantastic. Um, I think they're actually little, um, sort of look different little t toys that they attach themselves to, but I just decided I just wanted to, to use these parts and they are a great size as well. So they come in a different sort of diff other different colors as well. But here I'm just using these as an example. So I'll come back to these in a minute. So on my list here, I've got for a warm up, I was looking into some information about the Chinese New Year. Um, I actually home educate uh, my son. So we were looking at some information anyway. So I came up with loads of cool information with regards to uh, different meanings and different things that the Chinese do for their New Year. And um, this is what it's all based on. So oranges and tangerines. So orange balls came to mind for me um, and they're going to go and do a warm-up and they're going to find as many oranges and tangerines as they can um, as always as i always say in the videos you can always incorporate other different activities just even within this one so you can add in a certain amount of numbers that they go and collect you can go and add they can pick out the numbers that they go and collect or you can have, uh, they, they blow the balls back and add in, they can splash them forwards, depending on the age group that you're doing, and of course their ability that they can do. Um, my sort of niche area, if you like, is parent and toddler and preschoolers and early stages, although I do have some ideas here for you for the higher stages later on. Um, but, you know, they are learning their foundational skills with regards to uh, building that confidence within the water. And we want to play as many games as possible so that they don't know that they're actually learning their skill sets. Um, you know, and it's not just a case of now you're going to be blowing your bubbles. Um, we're making it in a playful well, way that actually uh, children really resonate with. They feel comfortable doing that sort of thing. So... If you've been watching my video for a while now, uh, my videos for a while, make sure you like and subscribe to make sure that you uh, get uh, the videos every week. I upload every week, so make sure you don't miss out on those. So, and also share to any of your fellow swimming teachers uh, if you think that they will benefit from this. So, going to go and get they, their oranges and tangerines. So. Brilliant for orange balls, that's what came to mind. <laughs> also what I have is that uh, I have printed and laminated 
some uh, Chinese lanterns and I've done some different shapes because this is actually great uh, for learning their shapes as well. So you, I can actually add this as a freebie if you're interested in that. Uh, and I have the different shapes of where um, you can do many different ones. There's a couple here, but there's four here that I'm going to use. So I'm going to place these on the side and you can either have um, big or small. I'm actually going to use pom-poms. I do love using lots of loose part play type of activities, uh, especially like I said with preschoolers and parent and toddler. Uh, they do a lot of this on dry land, so I try and replicate as much as I can from what uh, any type of learning opportunity there is on dry land that we can do in the water at the same time. So why not, right? Um, so again, you can get the two different sizes of pom-poms. Please, uh, as I always said, please bear in mind your age group, depending on whether or not you use the smaller ones or the bigger ones. So the parent and toddler with the bigger ones, what they're going to do is that I'm probably going to place these on the around the side of the pool. They go and find the red pom-poms. You can also spread these out in the water as well. It's entirely up to you where you want to put them. They're going to go and collect them and they're going to come back and then they're going to decorate their lanterns. So they can choose which lantern they want to come back to or you can always allocate each child with a certain, uh, certain one, so a certain shape and they come back to this. Or you can spread them along your pool space and they can choose which lanterns they go and they're going to decorate. That's an, another activity. Um, also what I have here are fortune cookies. <laughs> so I've actually made my own fortune cookies. So it's a really good fun thing to do. Um, I've made them from different colours. And I found there was a tutorial online with regards to how to make these and they were made from paper. So I thought, oh, I bet you I can make these from craft foam. <laughs> and I have. <laughs> so I've made these and I'll just quickly show you how I have done it. So that if you're wanting to make your own, very simple, very easy. I did test them with a smaller size. Um, but they didn't really work and so this is the size that I found it works really well it's about 13 centimeters actually but I found a bowl <laughs> one of my son's old bowls that he uses and I um, just drew around the bowl and I just like I said I tested a couple of sizes that worked and this worked best for me of this size so basically I drew around the bowl and uh, what you're going to do is that you're going to just fold it in half and then you're going to pinch the middle section here. Then what you're going to do is open it up and then you're going to turn it and then you push that part away, you push the last bit in the, um, beforehand <laughs> and then you're going to pull in to make your fortune cookie. So to obviously keep it like that. I've got my trusty glue gun here and I'm just going to glue in the inside here so that it holds. I've got my glue gun here. <laughs> Highly recommend. If you haven't watched my equipment video, then please watch that because you'll notice that I have put about a trusty glue gun in there. So basically I've glued this and I'm just pinching it, waiting for it to dry and they know they, they last quite a good time if you've got a really good and just make sure you hold it a really good glue gun now the foam that works best that i found are the thinner foam pieces if you've got quite thick like this one's quite thick that was a little bit harder to actually maneuver because we were trying to replicate paper okay so that's now dry <laughs> And also just to uh, secure it a little bit more so they're a little bit more hardy in the water, I actually glue in the inner part here just to make sure it doesn't unfold. So I'm going to put some glue in there as well. I feel like Blue Peter. And anyone knows Blue Peter? Remember Blue Peter? <laughs> and you're going to hold that down and that should stick. 
So again, holding it to make sure. Now you might want to, some of them, because especially this pink one, it was a little bit thick of um, foam. So what I needed to do was just to make sure that um, the part in here as well was glued. So I'm just going to do a little bit there as well, just to make sure I have secured it properly. And put more glue in there. And I'm just going to hold it a little bit. And we have some really cool fortune cookies. So, you know, obviously with normal fortune cookies, you would have your fortune written inside on some paper. Um, and we get really excited, don't we, when we open up to see what our fortune holds for us. But I'm not going to do that with these because they are stuck in position. So what I have done instead is that I've put a number on them. So this one's actually going to be number five and then the pink one was going to be number six. So I've just written using our, our Sharpie on there. And what I've done is that working with the um, stage one, I do Swim England. So with stage one, I have a list of their outcomes that they are working on. So what I've done is I've mirrored or just picked off some of the outcomes that they are working on and I have numbered, so laminated this and they go and collect their fortune cookies and the way you get go and um, have them go off and get them is entirely up to you. These are great for if they're on their backs they can hold them or if you're using noodles with connectors they can balance their fortune cookies. The older ones, they can try and balance them on their heads, on their foreheads or on their heads as they're moving. So many, you sort of be quite creative with how you do go and get these. Maybe they have to go and find them first, do a little bit of a scavenger hunt style type of activity, add on to that as well. <clears throat> so I've gone down and I've picked the, I'm going to do purple, <laughs> my favourite colour. I've picked number two. So I come back to the sheets and this can be on a kickboard um, or it could be lying on the, on the, you know, around on the pool space and they come and they see what they have to do. So with parent and toddler, they can do it themselves because they, uh, you know, if they're high end of ducklings, then they would be working. So you obviously you would do the numbers according to the outcomes of the group that you're working with and choose which ones you want to put on. Um, I don't, I'm not going to do any more than six. Um, so I might end up doing uh, maybe a couple more fortune cookies of the different colours, I haven't finished yet, um, and, then and then replicate some of the numbers. If they do come back and they've got the same number, that's okay, they're just practising again, um, and they, can, they maybe can uh, forfeit it out and choose something else if they want to. No right or wrong, wrong way of doing it, as long as we're getting through some of the skills that they're working on in a fun way, then that's what we're doing. Okay, so um, where was the one that I just made? All right, so here's the blue one, um, the blue one, green one that I've just made. So they go down and then number five is shower water overhead. So with the older ones, you can also add in any of the ones that they're maybe stuck on that they're working on, certain uh, skill sets or outcomes that they're, work, they're trying to work on and they're um, you know, struggling a little bit, but you know, it's that practice, isn't it? But a different way. The other thing that I found was that they do red envelopes for good luck. That's lucky. So I have made, um, I ran out of red cut of red foam, if I'm honest with you. So I need to go and get some, but I just wanted to show you what I will be doing and adding for my next lessons. Uh, the, um, I've actually done some Chinese letters here and this means happiness. And I'm going to choose some different uh, sort of terminology like joy, happiness, um, love and things like that of where I'm going to use the Chinese writing and I'll let them know what they are. You could always do a, a, a you know, some pictures using Chinese letters, you know, maybe they're water based um, or it could be something that's, you know, dragon or something that's Chinese, lantern or just certain words. So you're adding in another learning opportunity for them. You could also write on the back here uh, an outcome or a skill that they're wanting, you're wanting them to perform on the back, 
or again you could put a number on and then they could refer to which what sheet so for instance the older ones if uh, you know if you're wanting to do that they could either read it themselves and do it and they have to maybe do it in sequence order start from one and then they have to work through so they they go down swim see what they what it is perform the activity, leave it there ready for the next person. You could incorporate this into a relay type of race of where they then go down, they choose, maybe these are stuck on the wall that they climb out and go and pick one um, and they see what activity they have to do before they then go back to then tag the next partner, for instance. Um, or they could do this individually as well so that you ask them to swim a certain distance, go and see what they have to do, perform it and then come back to you and so on so these are the uh the gifts um apparently they put money in the envelopes um but of course <laughs> it would be nice if we could do that right um but i've just it's just craft foam red craft foam and i've added that on so super easy to do that so it's another activity there to do uh, other things that I've done, um, a couple more here, is um, are the fireworks. So what's the celebration without fireworks? Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, with the fortune cookies, what you could do is with the dragons, they choose the same colour as to what dragon that they've got. So for instance, you could have a good couple of green ones that are, um, out there with different numbers on. So you've got one uh, one to six on green fortune cookies and they go and choose the green ones only because they are the green dragon or like I said you know if they've chosen red you could go and ask them to go and just choose all the red um, fortune cookies so you could do it that way as well implementing the dragons so forgot about that one um, going back to fireworks so I've got a couple of cool different uh, things here for fireworks Bringing in the theme of, we've done multiple times, Independence Day. Um, here in the UK, we do fireworks night, bonfire night. Um, it's New Year celebration. So you may have already used these themes different times before. So um, different fireworks I've done. I've got these really cool sensory balls here that actually sink. So rather than just doing a traditional uh, you know, dive stick or dive toy, these are great because to me, they look like fireworks. So they can go down, you can throw them out, they can throw them out and see how far they can get them. You can add a little bit of an obstacle course in there that they have to go and choose. I've got different types of fireworks style, different, you know, different things. So um, these look like seaweed as well. So I've used these in a, a sea, sea life or marine life theme as well. But these again too look like fireworks to me. So they sink down as well. I've also got the uh, light up uh, sensory balls, uh, loads of different colours you can get in these. To me again, they look like fireworks because they light up as well. I've also made before, I have made these fireworks too, which I could do in another, um, another video if you want to, um, of where I've made these, made these ages ago. Strips of, strips of um, craft foam, and then you put them together and you put them together with a pin uh, and then, um, I can't remember what they're called, but they just the metal pins there of where, and then you can, you can glue them to be honest and they stick too. So those are the fireworks I've done for those as well. And also I've made these before too. So you can incorporate a whole sort of lesson on fireworks if you're wanting to. <laughs> um, so you've got the fireworks as well. You can continue with the, uh, with, with the colour coordination if you want to of the fireworks if they're going and collecting these but like I said you can add in a little bit of a obstacle course too um, I've mentioned these previously in other videos too but these to me as well look a little bit of fireworks but these can stick on the side of the walls down on the bottom different you can use your different layers then of your pool space of where um, you could have these and pluck, you know, put in different places again past your obstacle course where they then have to go and collect as many fireworks as possible. And um, these could be also uh, put on the walls on the outside of the pool area, depending on how much and you know how much you're able to use. So think creatively of where you could place these, um, and then you can collect them, and then they can actually then make make their own sort of 
patterns if they want to when they come back. But these are really cool because they sound amazing. Oh, they are so good. Good, satisfying, they really are. My son absolutely loves those at the moment. Um, so, so they're really good as well. So for the older ones, what I've added in is, uh, like I mentioned about the uh, different outcomes for, again, you can always write them on here too, it's up to you, um, a dragon game. So what they're going to do, you can also do these with the young ones, you can adapt it. Um, you can adapt it so that the preschoolers and parent toddlers, they are sitting on their noodles. The older ones, of course, are using their strokes. You can choose which stroke that they are doing. Maybe you've got a set of certain uh, strokes that they're doing at a certain time. And what they're doing is, is that they are going and collecting. Um, somebody starts, <laughs> they swim down and then they collect another swimmer. So if they're on their noodles, for instance, they're going to swim down. You don't have to do all the way down 25 meters, but you can put maybe cones out for where they actually swim down to, where the other swimmers, and you're going to have, you know, like a relay style setup. So you've got some down one end, some down the other. They're going to go and pick up the other swimmer, and then they're going to swim down back and pick another one up. So basically they're adding on each time they have a swimmer. So if they're on their noodles, they're basically holding on to each other's noodles and forming a chain of where they're going and swimming with their buddies. Um, with the older ones, they are going to be holding on to their feet. So you've got, say for instance, the first person swims down, collects the second person, <laughs> and they are going to be the leg kickers. And the person that was originally in front are going to be the arms. They come down for the third person. So the third person then touches and holds on to the middle person whereas so number two now isn't doing anything they are literally holding on to the person's front legs and the person behind them is holding their feet so you're adding on a caterpillar effect but they're going to be dragons today <laughs> um, and they are going to pick up everybody basically so depending on how many you have in your group so that is for your chinese new year let me know how it goes. If you have any other ideas yourself, please comment below. I'd be really interested to hear what you have done. Maybe you've done something different in the past and that worked really well. Or maybe you have some ideas that you're working with at the moment. But please make sure to like and subscribe and um, I'll see you in the next video. Let me know how it goes. Happy swimming!